Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to focus on making our Power App portal a lot prettier with some basic CSS. So stay tuned. This Power App Portal video is part of an, a series that we've been doing on creating a Power App Portal from the start to finish. In this case, we're focused on the look and feel of the portal, but if you want to find out more information about Power App Portals, please watch the previous videos that have, they're all numbered appropriately on, on these step-by-step -step instructions. So let's begin. This video is focused solely on how do we make the form that we're looking at right here prettier inside of Power Apps Portals. Now, we created this form in a previous video. It walks through actually creating a financial application for a student. But we're going to do some basic steps to kind of make this look a little cleaner. So first of all, you want to open up the experience here. Let's go and open up this real quick. Uh, let me go back over to our, our home screen here. and. Inside of the Power App Portal Universe, Pragmatic Works University, I'm going to hit the little ellipsis button here, and I'm going to hit Edit. That's going to go ahead and launch the editor, that kind of WordPress type editor, portal designer that we can use to edit this website. Now, to do our theming, you'll notice over on the left here, we'll select Themes. I'm going to turn on uh, uh, turn on Basic Themes, which is this one been turned off a moment ago. I'm going to turn on Basic Themes. And then I'm going to select uh, this little blue theme, and I'm going to clone it first of all, so we can kind of make this theme our own. So when I hit clone or customize, excuse me, there we go. It moves it up top. I'm going to call this theme on the right now. Uh, let me get rid of my face here so you can see that. I'll call this uh, Brian theme, and put whatever kind of colors work for you here. And as soon as you do that, you'll notice uh, when I click outside of that theme now that now back over in the, the theme area, that we can now hit Edit CSS. Now, I'm going to go ahead and upload some custom CSS I've already created, and I'm going to put that in the comments of this, uh, so the long CSS here. You know, use it as an example, but definitely don't want to use it wholeheartedly, right? You want, you want to adopt the whole thing. But this is what's working in our case for some of our customers. So I'm going to upload this. I'm going to upload brian.css. This is the file you'll find in the comments section. There we go. So a few things that I've done here, like most developers and uh, uh, Power Apps portals, I've gone through and as I'm looking at the portal here, for example, I, I said, well, how do I modify this text right here, for example? And I right click on it, hit inspect, and we can see that this label ID right here is using a certain type of class. You can, right, it's, it's, it's the info class right here. So this is what you want to modify likely in your CSS. So you'll, most developers are, might already be familiar with that. But let's go ahead and refresh this now that I've done that. What is the impact of that CSS? So, so we're already seeing some, some changes, some positive, some not positive. As a matter of fact, if I hit next right here, we can see it's more on the positive side. This looks really nice. But on the previous section, we got some problems, more fundamental problems in our Power App portal. You may notice the notes right here, and that's our clue, this notes section you're seeing over here. So I'm going to go back to our uh, let me go back to our Power App portal here. Okay, there we go. And let me go back there again. I apologize. All right, here we go. And we'll go to uh, make.powerapps.com, select my right environment. I think it's this guy right here. And the piece I need to do here is I need to go back to my solution. And that form that we're using for that first screen looks a little bit funny, at least in the Power App portal. So this is why you always want to have a portal, a screen for your end users, and then you want a screen for Power Apps portals, a form that is, excuse me. So I'm going to go back to my, uh, uh, my student application here. I'm going to go over to my forms, and then I'm going to hit this portal web form. And this is the first screen that the user is seeing when they come here. So right now, it looks a little, little bit wonky because see, it's two tabs. So I don't really care about this timeline control over here. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete the section also. Nobody can't delete the section until I make it one column. So to make this one column, I'll select the, the, the whole form. Okay, make sure you get the whole form selected by hitting the white area here. Um, and I'm sorry, the, the form right here, right here, down below. And then I'll go ahead and set the white area. Go to formatting. Let's get rid of my face again. And then I'm going to make the layout, instead of two columns, one column. Okay, that stretches us all the way across now. 
hit save and publish. Now this is only affecting this, this given tab right now. So you might decide to make it more columns and other tabs. But I don't really need the timeline. I didn't need that all that all this for the portal side, I don't need that at least. So now if I go back over to my portal, let me go back to my pages, go to my new application. Let's uh, let's browse this website again. Let's see how we look this time. And then we'll look at some of the CSS that's driving this. Okay, it's refreshing now. Let's see how we look. Oh, that looks a little cleaner now. Again, you'll go through and you'll clean this up a lot more. If you, uh, there's some weirdness sometimes in the tabs. You'll see I have tabs in some areas and not others. What you might find to get those tabs in there properly, you might have to go through uh, your Power App portal again. There it is. Uh, and go select your tab info. Sometimes I've had to go to classic mode sometimes by hitting switch to classic and then select the tab name there and then save and publish and then it magically shows up. So it, it's kind of odd how that works sometimes. Classic mode does take a little while to open up sometimes, but once I go into here, um, I'll put, uh, I'll go and call this tab, uh, the label will be basic uh, application info. I'll hit okay. I'll hit save. It's the way I've had to debug in the past, unfortunately. Save, excuse me, not save as, and then publish here. And then I can go back and let's see what the impact of that was. Okay, let's see the impact of that. Uh, I don't. I want to make sure I refresh this because I had the wrong tab name here. So don't 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 hit save on, on this the modern interface until you refresh. Otherwise, you'll overwrite what you just did in classic mode. Okay, so there we go. See a basic application info there. So now if I hit browse, let's see if that fixed it. There's some oddities like that you'll find in Power Apps Portal sometimes where it doesn't recognize a tab until you uh, hit refresh like that. And there we go. Now I have basic application info there as well. So. Just some weirdness like that that you might find in some of your tabs. Now again, to do this, you'll right click on that and you'll hit inspect and you can see this is a header two tag right here it's using for that. Oh, inspect, there it goes. And it has a certain class called tab title. So in my in my uh, CSS, I'm doing I'm being a little too liberal on doing all the H2s this way. So again, to find out my, my code, we can go over here under themes, go to edit CSS and this Brian CSS You'll see I'm doing all the H2s. You probably don't want to do that. Uh, you'll see the section titles. I'm making those a little more weighty on the section titles. Uh, the instructions. I'm making those more, you know, navy blue. Uh, the progress bar is a certain color now. You can kind of cover over it and change the color if you want. Um, all this kind of code you can kind of tweak to your liking here. Uh, the biggest change though was uh, the section you're seeing uh, right, I think it's, oh, let me kind of kill this right here. The big section you're seeing here is going to be like the signature page and those kind of ones where you kind of get really, uh, really fancy here. All right, the, uh, right here, the H2. This is where I got a little more fancy by padding it and doing all that, but you can get very, very explicit on that. You just hit save and then you hit, you can actually just refresh at that point to make it work, okay? So with that now done, uh, we're ready now to do one last thing that might make it a little cleaner. If I go back to my uh, new application page, you might want to, on top of this box right here, um, go to your, your code, and in your code where you're actually uh, put, popping in the application, you may want to put a progress bar up there if you wanted to. So to do that, just put, you know, put the word progress. You, know, you may want to bold it. So I put some kind of title on there and when you save that, you'll see it up here. And when I browse it though, hopefully, we'll see the word progress right above that progress bar there, hopefully. There we go. So you can put whatever kind of text you want inside of that also. Well, these are some easy ways you can kind of make some changes. As I go next, 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 you can see it looks a little bit cleaner now. Uh, all these items are here. Oh, by the way, back in this previous tab, when I hit upload tax record, you'll notice this one also does not have the title. So let's recap that one more time, how I get the title up here as well. This is tab name, right? So again, I'm gonna go back to my web form. There we go, back to my web form. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna leave it all together this time. Hit back, back, go back to my solutions, there we go. The solution I wanna to go to is Pragmatic Works University, financial evidence. And again, this is one of the oddities right now uh, in PowerUp's portals. We'll go to forums where it's not picking up 
the, the, the tab name that I had in here. So when I go back to my, my form that we created in the earlier one here, if you want that header two up top first as tax info, if you want that in there, uh, the th I find sometimes I have to go to classic mode, make a little tiny change in classic mode under tax info. All right, like for example, I'll just call this tax information. So make some kind of small change. I'll hit OK, hit save, hit publish, and let's see, let's see the reaction of that when we do that. So again, I'll go back to my Power App portal. I'll hit browse. Okay. And hopefully now, after this refreshes, I should be able to hit next and then hit upload. And now we should have a tax information top as well. So that's a weird oddity, right? At least at the time of this recording, it might be better now. Uh, but right now, at least, it has a little bit of oddities like that you might have to do occasionally. So hit next. And there we go. So get your page and we're off to the races. So this is an interesting way, hopefully, for you to make some basic CSS changes. I did not make any kind of CSS changes to our list here, but you control completely what, what this looks like. The language that's being used behind the scenes is called Liquid. It's from Shopify. So you can go to the Shopify developer resources for Liquid, and you can control exactly how, what's happening inside of this. But the controls we're using are, have that, that logic already baked for you. Again, the CSS can be found when you're looking at here, you go over to uh, the pencil icon and then go to Edit CSS, and this is where you're gonna change. Make sure you, you create your own file, upload your own file first versus modify these other files. So that way you can kind of isolate what changes you've made versus other, other sites. They also, as a version control of this stuff, they will up, they will overwrite you if you update, update, update some of these. So they try to prevent you from doing that by making some of these read-only. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. This is a video in our series on Power Apps portals. We also have this in our boot camp as well, where we go much deeper into these things. You can find our boot camps, information about our hackathons, and our on-demand learning at pragmaticworks.com. You can also find that in the description of this video. Have a great day, and please do subscribe to find out more videos about Power Apps and Power Apps portals. Have a great day.